medical study designed to determine how much water is needed to become properly hydrated was conducted using 26 subjects. The average amount of water required daily by the subjects to be fully hydrated was 53.6 ounces with a standard deviation of 10 ounces. Form a 90% confidence interval to estimate the true average amount of water needed to become fully hydrated. Does this interval contradict the long-standing belief that the average person requires 64 ounces of water per day to be fully hydrated? All right, so let's identify the important key phrase here. It's going to tell us which problem we have to work out. It says form a 90% confidence interval to estimate the true average amount of water. So it's a 90% confidence interval problem, and we're looking to estimate the true average. So that's clear from the wording. The next step is then to start working out the confidence interval, applying the four steps we learned for that problem. So the first thing we want to do is record the data, right? All right, so recording the data means that we should have N, we should have an X bar, we should have an S, we should have a confidence level, we should have an alpha. Okay, so let's get N for the problem. It says 26 subjects were studied, right? 26 subjects is gonna be our N, so that's 26 here. It says the average amount of water required daily by the subjects to be fully hydrated was 53.6 ounces. 53.6 is our X bar then, the sample mean for the 26 people, with a standard deviation of 10 ounces, so S is 10. Then it says form a 90% confidence interval, so we know the confidence level is 0 0.90. Alpha is the complement of that, so 0 0.10. That way together these add up to 100%. And then finally, alpha divided by 2, which we always need, is 0 0.05. Okay, good. At this moment, the next step of the problem is going to be to get our table value, our critical value. So step two is always to get the table value. Before you go to write down the table value, you want to identify the sample size and see if it's large enough to use Z. In this case, it's not. It's small, so we're going to use the T alpha divided by 2 value. So we're going to say here that we need to find T alpha divided by 2 because that sample size is under 30. Okay, in order to find T alpha divided by 2, we look up this area. So we're going to look up 0 0.05 under 25 degrees of freedom. Remember, the degrees of freedom is simple to calculate. It's just N minus 1. So 26 take away 1 gives us the 25. We know we're always looking up alpha divided by 2 on the T table. So we look up alpha divided by 2 and get 0.05. Okay, so that's it. Let's go to the t-table and find the critical t-value. So we're looking at 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 25. The 0 0.05 column is the second column, and let's scroll down. Do we see degrees of freedom 25? Okay, so degrees of freedom 25, we get 1.708. 1.708. Okay, so we find our critical T value to be 1.708. From here, the next step is pretty easy. It's just to find the margin of error. Remember the formula is T alpha divided by 2, S divided by the square root of N. So our T value, our T table value is 1.708, which we found in step 2. Then we have our S, our standard deviation, which is 10, and then divide by the square root of N, the square root of N is 26. Okay, and let's use our calculator to work out that margin of error. So we'll have 1.708 times 10 divided by the square root of 26. And that ends up giving us approximately 3.3497 or so, right? I'm going to actually keep the full amount of my calculator for our next step. And the next and final step, the easiest step of forming the interval, is x bar minus the error, x bar plus the error. And for us, that's going to be our x bar is 53.6. So it'll be that minus the error, 53.6 plus the error. And please remember the error is what we calculated above here, so we just plug that number in. So I'm going to do that right now in our calculators, 53.6 minus the error and then the same 53.6 plus the error. And we end up having the following interval then. We have 50.3 up to 56.9. 
So 50.3 ounces up to 56.9 ounces. Remember this problem is about water. These are the number of ounces that we think um, it requires on average to be properly hydrated. All right, so let's word our final solution then the way we normally do it. So we're gonna say we are 90% confident the true average amount required is between 50.3 and 56.9 ounces. Okay, so basically this is our wording for the final step of the problem. We are 90% confident that the true average amount of water required to be properly hydrated is between 50.3 and 56.9 ounces. All right, then we should answer this last question they asked us. Does the interval contradict the long-standing belief that the average person requires 64 ounces of water per day to be fully hydrated? Well, um, if it requires 64 ounces to be properly hydrated, if that's the average amount to be properly hydrated, then it should be within our interval because our interval is supposed to capture the population mean, right? We're 90% confident that the real population mean is between 50.3 and 56.9. So this number 64 is outside of that value, it's too high. So we think that in fact our interval does contradict this long held belief that it requires eight to eight ounce glasses of water to be hydrated. So basically we are kind of refuting that with this data. This data makes it look like it's less water that's required to be properly hydrated.